first of all, I want to thank you all for um, that coming and speak to the youth. This set of ground. I get excited because I'm passionate about you. So if my voice raises, I'm not talking at you. I'm not talking down. In fact, I can sit down if you want me to. But I just get passionate when speaking to our youth because you are the future. And I know you've heard that so many times and you don't quite understand it. We got Donald Trump getting ready to get in the White House. Yeah. Donald Trump, you can be the next president. You saw Barack do it. You can do it. So I get really passionate about speaking to the youth. So my story is this. I went to prison at 17 years old. My mom has been a correctional officer all my life in Washington, D.C. D.C. jail, Lloyd, youth center, behind the wall, margin. She come home every day with this uniform on. And I would see her with her uniform on. At the same time, like Brother Curry was saying, I was being brought up in the streets. She would come home, boy, you're going to go to jail. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. But she worked so hard just to put food on the table. You don't understand how hard your parents work, man just to keep the clothes on your back, just to keep the roof over your head. And sometimes they can't give us all their attention. And I was one of those that sought attention from the elders. Just like the brother said, when they get to pumping your head up, I'm gonna use some language, some kind of, some language I'm gonna use that the parents may not understand. So when they sizing you up, or they putting the battery in your back, pumping you up, just like he said, they only pumping you up to do their dirt and get away with it. And I was one of them. At 17 years old, bro, I was carrying every type of gun that I could get my hands on. And some of it was because of the environment that we grew up in. In the late 80s, early 90s, it was vicious out here in Washington, D.C. Vicious. It was murder after murder. 500, 550, 6, I don't know where it's 600, but it was a lot of murders in D.C. And some of you may live in that environment today. You may walk outside and see a, a brother shot up. And it plays on your psyche. Trust me, I know how it plays. Going to a funeral, seeing your homie dead in the casket, that plays on your psyche, right? How many been in funerals to see their homies dead? Nobody? Just you? How, how many people been to a funeral with, with a young person being dead first, being killed? Right? So that plays on your psyche. And in my psyche, I felt like I had to have a gun. No matter what, I never forget, man. I witnessed a devil homicide. Blew the brother brains out, man. And I walked over and actually saw it like, good God almighty. And from that point on, I was traumatized to the point where I had to have my gun. But the problem is, my gun was for the next brother. When I got my gun, my gun was, I'm gonna kill an end. Let one jump out there, I'm gonna crush them. And as a result of that thinking, I want you to focus on the thinking. As a result of that thinking, the first chance I got to put that work in, I put that work in. So there I was, 17 years old, with a mom that's a correctional officer all my life. I'm out here banging. First chance I get, I'm banging. I want that name behind me. Oh, Slim don't be playing. Lil Joe ain't no joke. Don't even jump out there because he gonna crush you. Same thing y'all here in this school today. And when I pulled that trigger, man, two attempted murders. Didn't kill him, thank God. See, that's, that's the maturity side of me right now. Thank God I didn't kill him. I can feel redemption. I can feel like, man, I didn't take that brother life. He has a chance to say, hey, he living. And I have a chance to say, man, brother, listen, I was young. Caught up in that mentality, and I apologize. And I'm so thankful I didn't take his life. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I still traumatized this individual. I traumatized my community. You may not understand about taking care of our own yet, because you're still young. And we have been so far taken away from uh, loving ourselves, loving black. You know, you know, back in the day with the Black Panther Party and the other organizations we had, it was about black loving ourselves, we have been taken away from that to now is 
I hate you. I wish I could use some other language, but I'm in the house of the Lord. <laughs> you know I mean, not 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 no cursing word, but the in. You know, I hate you in ninjas. ninjas. <laughs> you understand? This is what we do. All oh, the bees with the itch. I ain't say the word. You understand, Mitch? Okay, well, whatever the language is. But our minds are set up nowadays to where though when we see black, we hate black. We don't even want to support black. And that was by design. And as you get older and continue to, 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 to <coughs> investigate and do your studies, you will find out from the times that we hit these shores. Yes. From the time that our ancestors hit these shores, man, it's been something against black. Yes. It's the honest God truth, bro. Yes. And then when you get away, bro, I go back and I look at the times, man, when our parents were fighting, our grandparents, our ancestors was fighting just for civil rights. Mm -hmm. Civil rights, just for us to go to school and get an education. And now here it is today, we don't want no education. Mm -hmm. We dropping out of high school at 15. I dropped out. You know why I dropped out? Because I was in the street, I was getting money. Mm -hmm. Or I thought I was getting money. I can add one plus two. One thing about a drug dealer, he can count. <laughs> Math teacher couldn't tell me nothing about ounces, quarters, uh, uh, keys, thousand four grams. You couldn't tell me nothing about the drug weight because that's what I was into. So I dropped out and graduated to the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Let me speak on the penitentiary because the brother took it all the way there, man. At 17, going into prison, I thought I was the toughest thing and just walking through the door. In fact, I felt like I had to live up to it. But it's a thing when you get behind the wall, you're not the only tough guy there. Don't think you're the only one there to kill somebody or try to kill somebody. You on the block with nothing but killers. At 17, killers, because you're classified on your crime. So you're not gonna be in a cell with somebody that just stole some candy. You're going to be in a cell with another killer. A real live killer that didn't miss. Now what I want you to understand is, man, we don't have to be tough guys. We don't have to be tough guys. When you call home and your mother is going through certain illnesses, and you, how many people love their mom? How many people love their father? You may not even know we have situations. How many people would die for their mother? Die for your father. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you use a lie, mm -hmm. I tell you use a lie because your mother don't want you to die for her. Yeah. She wants you to live for her. Yeah. But you won't even live for your mother. Yeah. So I get excited. I'm not talking. Right. I'm not right. talking uh, 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 to you. Yeah. I'm not acting crazy with you, man, because I was in the same seat. I just get excited and passionate. <clears throat> I lost my mother while I was in the penitentiary. I can't even tell you man, how much that hurts me today. My woman is here, she'll tell you, Mother's Day is like the toughest time for me. I see obituary, bro. Here I am, in prison, going out on road crew. At this time, I'm on my way home. I'm in pre-release. Going out on road crew, bro. And I could not go to my mother's funeral. Mm -hmm. Huh? How would you feel being in prison and you can't go to your mom's funeral? You can't be there for your mother. She's going through her illness, man. And we say we love our parents. Why take your parents through that type of hell? Is that okay, Pastor? Man? No. I'm sorry. Why take them through that kind of stuff? When they laid down and gave us birth, man, you don't know the sacrifices that they make, man. You know? It's only my hope that we can come up out of this killing us. We say black lives matter. Some of us will protest all day, walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. Some of us will go outside of courthouses all night. Lay down in the cold, black lives matter. But we be the same ones that go into the hood tomorrow and kill a brother. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't have no idea what I was going to say, bro. Because I didn't want to write nothing. I wanted to come from the heart. And the brother took it all the way there. It's a different story, man, behind the walls. We don't want you to go behind the walls. Going behind the walls is not a rites of passage. It don't make you a soldier. It don't make you a strong black man because you went to prison and came home. That don't make you a strong black man. What makes you a strong black man is being home, taking care of your responsibilities, and giving back to your community. That's what a strong black man is, man. Being able to reach back and say, hold up, wait a minute. These youngers out southeast home. These youngers out land over stop. What can I come up with? What can I do to help my community? That's when you find the sisters trying to marry you. They try to lock you all the way down. You understand? If that's what you're looking for. Because it's about having a man that you can be proud of. That's my man right there. Soldier. And then you don't understand that the children coming below us, behind us, they looking at, they looking at you. Just like I looked at the OGs in my community. But my OGs was in the street. Some of them, that's all they knew. So I can't really even be mad at them. But as you, as you learn more, then there's a different responsibility on you. If I can beg you, man, to stop the violence, if I can beg, I don't know why we're here. I don't know what people's situation is. All I do know is that you have the potential to be better in life. No matter what the circumstance is, man, you have the potential, it's in you. And one thing we have to understand about potential, Potential is an is a, is a, is a ability that's just sitting there. It's waiting. And sometimes there are difficulties to bring that potential up out of you. It's just like life giving birth. You understand? The sperm cell always has the potential. Once it meets the egg, it comes forth. Can you understand the difficulty that the parent go, the mother go through in giving birth? What? If that baby can, if we can talk when we came out, we be talking, we have something to talk about. But I'm speaking to you about the potential that's in you, no matter where you are today in your life. No matter how many courtrooms you done been in. No matter if you've been locked up or not. I've been locked up twice. The potential is in you to do better. I met this man. I was so happy to see his name on the, on the, uh, he don't even, <clears throat> listen, on my second incarcerate, because I didn't get it right the first time, came home 12 years later on a 20 year sentence, 30 years old, now it's time to be a grown man. Went in at 17, mom's dead, you, listen, when you hit 18 years old, you're an adult. Your parents don't have to deal with the foolishness no more. Society gonna say, what's up? What you gonna do? We can't go back to your mother and tell your mother to come and get you out of prison. When you go in now, you in here. You gotta deal with us. And certain crimes, if you get waved to it, give me my time when I have to, bro. Certain times, if you, if you get waved up as an adult, guess what? Ain't nothing your mother can do. The state says you're an adult now. You commit an adult crime. If you ever get the chance to read a book, it's called The New Jim Crow yeah, yeah. by Michelle Alexander. Mm -hmm. My woman is reading the name. Yeah, yeah. It talks about mass incarceration mm -hmm. of you and I, yeah. not Mr. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is real. Yeah. The man said by your third grade test scores, yeah. they are coming up with the amount of prison beds that they need Pipeline. for you and I. Pipeline of prisons. Yes. Now watch this. Let me get this in. Have you ever heard the prison industrial complex? Yes. Do you know that you have private prisons mm -hmm. where you have record labels, mm -hmm. record execs who have uh, 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 what is it when you put money into something? Invest. invest. Mm -hmm. They invest into these prisons to have you and I fill these beds so they can get the money from the federal government, which is nothing but a prison hotel. Mm -hmm. 
And they find the government, they find the federal government if the beds are not up to a certain capacity. Mm -hmm. Right? Those beds are for you and I. So the rock music that we're listening to, all the garbage that we're listening to, mm -hmm. the big boys that sit behind the scene, the record execs, mm -hmm. they don't look like you and I. You don't even know their names. You've never seen them before. You think Jay-Z the man. Jay-Z not the man. Kanye ain't the man. Chris Lamar, they not the man. The man behind the man, he putting money into the prisons because he know that that's, that music, that mentality puts us there. Yes. It bothers me when we listen to music and then we want to emulate what we hear. Mm -hmm. You hear uh, rappers talking about they popping this, they popping a the molly, they taking X, they, they, they smoking this, they doing this, this, this. Next thing you know, we got our youngest walking down the street popping molly. Mm -hmm. Zapping out. Zapping out. It bothers me because you are our future, man. We just, we plead with y'all. We plead with you. If I can beg you, I'll beg you. I ain't never begged nobody for nothing in my life. You know? So, again, we're not talking at you. Man, I, I hope that you all get something from what we're saying. We just wanted to share our experiences with you because we love you. No matter how much you may think we don't love you, we may get on your nerve, we may be on your back. What you doing? Nah, you ain't gonna wear that. Pull them pants up. Do this, this. We're doing that because we've been there and we know the consequences behind it. You can't go and get a job, man, and look crazy. Yes, you can't have your tattoos all over your face, man, thinking somebody wants you working in their establishment. Lil Wayne, that's his business. That's what his job is to entertain. So he can do all kinds of crazy stuff and sip syrup and do this and do this, that, and that. The man getting his money behind that. I mean, that's real talk. He can't go in corporate America looking like that. What's that on his? <laughs> if you don't get out of here, we don't have that luxury, man. We got to go even harder. And I'm learning, bro. I'm learning, man, that education, I don't care what nobody tell Education is the escape from this reality. If you want to make six figures, if you want to put the Hugo Boss on, you want the Gucci's right now, it's not your time for Gu Gucci and Hugo Balls. It's not your time for that kind of stuff yet, man. Get some nice, decent shoes, clean pants, fresh hair cut. The honey's still going to like you. As long as you fresh, that, look, $15, shake that up. <laughs> Buy, buy a bottle of cologne. Get some, get some Gucci or some cologne. Take a shower every day. They gonna be on your line, right? But I want you to understand that everything happens in stages. Don't rush to be an adult. Please don't rush to, to, to want to jump out your parents' house because them bills come every week. Every week them bills. Come. When your mother's trying to tell you, or your father is trying to tell you things because we have experienced it, man. Please listen to your parents. Yeah. If you do nothing, to, and love your parents. They're not going to be here forever. Yeah. And it's the worst feeling in the world when you can't call them. You can't get on the phone and say, Mom, look at me now. I love you, Mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need me to take you to the grocery store. That's the worst feeling in the world is not to be able to call your parents and tell them that you love them. And with that, man, I want you all to know that, man, I love you. If you don't hear from no men or nobody, I know that brother love you, and I know I love you. And I only come in here, and we ain't getting paid, we doing this from our heart. Amen. Oh, real quick, I met this brother. He came to one of the private prisons that I was in. A private prison. And he came in, and I said at his tape, same thing he did today, and I said at his tape, I said, brother, I want to do what you do. How do I get out there and talk to the youth? And his words to me, just do it. Just do it. Same thing I'll leave to you in getting yourself together. Just do it. I thank you all for listening.